off you go. Hi there, I'm Dan Lapworth from the British Geological Survey and uh, we're presenting two posters uh, at the uh, IAH uh, 2014 Congress in Marrakesh. Um, just showing a little bit of evidence from some research we've been carrying out in Zambia as part of the upgrowth uh, catalyst grants. This, this is an, uh, a research project that's focused uh, in an urban, a growing urban town in sub-Saharan Africa uh, called Kabwe with a historic uh, a history of mining activity um, and also uh, a dependence, a heavy dependence on groundwater and also a self-supply from shallow groundwaters, particularly in slum areas. And that was the focus of our research. Um, we undertook a water quality survey and sanitary risk assessment survey within uh, the, the slum areas of Cambway um, to look at the risk factors associated with the use of these shallow supplies and to look at the uh, seasonal variation in water quality uh, and to try and understand um, the sources of contamination in the shallow groundwater. Now, as part of that, we, we did uh, some fairly novel uh, characterisation of water quality, both looking at broad range organic contamination and also the poster over here uh, highlighting the potential use um, of a fluorescence in situ probe for predicting uh, fecal indicator bacteria, and I'll go on to that later. To start with, so looking at emerging organic contaminants, these are um, contaminants such as pesticides, um, antibiotics, personal care products, things that are found in wastewaters. Um, we did a survey in the shallow, focused on the shallow groundwater system to look at the, the occurrence of these types of organics. Um, and as far as we understand, this is probably the first such study uh, to be undertaken in, in Africa. So if I um, draw your attention to this uh, figure to start with, before. and this shows uh, the number of detections uh, of uh, different uh, types of organic uh, contaminants, both in, in high-income areas, low-income areas, and also in an industrial and a peri-urban setting. And the, the point to take home, really, is the high number um, of, of organic contaminants seems to be associated with these low-income areas. Um, and we see relatively little um, contamination in the higher income and the peri-urban areas. So we see preferential contamination of, of a range, a range of uh, organic contaminants within this shallow ground system, particularly problematic in low-income um, areas. And this is likely to do with the density of wastewater sources in these areas and how wastewater is dealt with and the diffuse nature uh, of wastewater uh, contamination to the shallow ground system. If I draw your attention uh, to this figure next, um, this, uh, this de details uh, the types of organic compounds that we've been finding uh, in these shallow groundwater systems. And the first point to note is that we've found um, this compound called DEET, which is an insecticide that's applied to the skin. Um, and we found that uh, almost to be universally present in, in each of the, of the, of the, the areas we visited, the peri-urban, High, high income areas, low income areas, and also in an industrial area. So this seems to be quite a widespread contaminant in the shallow groundwater system. Second point to take home are the types of compounds that we're finding. Um, over here we can see uh, a number of chlorinated trihalomethanes uh, that are being generated in the low income uh, the shallow groundwater system. And these are often associated with the on site treatment, uh, chlorination of uh, shallow wells where, where, they, where they introduce for instance um, chlorine tablets directly into the wells. If the wells have a high organic loading then these can actually generate trihalomethanes uh, which are potentially uh, carcinogenic compounds. So there's something to be quite aware of in areas where you have high organic uh, contamination. Secondly there are some uh, interesting uh, different compounds that we've seen. Uh, for instance caffeine uh, and tryptosan which are a classic wastewater indicators. These are, these are contaminants that are associated with uh, wastewater sources in the environment. Um, and, uh, for instance, tryptosan are used uh, quite, quite widely in creams and also in uh, hand, hand washes uh, for cleaning and for antibacterial purposes. Um, and these are often uh, quite uh, resilient within the environment. Uh, they're not broken down easily because they're antimicrobial. Um, they're, they're quite good traces for wastewater contamination. So it's interesting that we're seeing some of these typical compounds. Also up here, um, 
in the higher income areas, you're also seeing evidence of some pesticide contamination. This, this shows us that while um, the numbers of compounds are quite low and the concentrations are quite low, um, there are there is some evidence of urban agricultural contamination within, it, within this type of um, setting. Um, if I draw your attention over to, to, to this, um, uh, this, this plot here, this shows the distribution of this compound, this insecticide called DEET, uh, within the different, uh, different sampling uh, areas, the low income area, high income area and peri-urban. And, and again, this illustrates the points the point I made earlier that we that this compound is quite widespread in the environment and also we see almost universally an increase uh, in loading, increase in contamination in the shallow groundwater system following the onset of the rainy season. So we see a sort of a, a consistent increase in concentration within the groundwater and we think this is probably best explained by uh, a continued source within the unsaturated zone that as the water table rises is being picked up uh, in the shallow groundwater system and the concentrations being increased in that way. This shows that the system is, is fairly responsive, recharge is happening very actively, and there is a rapid pathway for recharge and contamination uh, from surface settings uh, to the shallow groundwater. Uh, um, if I now move on, uh, perhaps, if I just, perhaps if I just summarise the findings, so this, this again, just to reiterate the point, I think it's probably one of the first studies to quantify uh, a range of organic emerging contaminants in groundwater. DEET, this um, insecticide was found universally within the shallow groundwater system. Um, and this, is, this has also been found to be the case in other studies undertaken in tropical regions uh, such as Singapore and, and Southeast Asia. Um, many, many of these compounds were frequently uh, uh, identified in the developed world. Um, we're not found in such high concentrations within this particular setting, and we think this is probably due partly to the availability and also the cost of, of these types of uh, compounds and the use of these types of compounds within, within the developing world. Um, and also um, the fact that the, the, the urban uh, setting that we were do, doing this research in is fairly low density compared to other areas, so it may have, much, it may have a, a lower contaminant source loading compared to areas like Osaka or Lagos, uh, with, with a much more dense uh, urban population. Right, so this, this poster highlights uh, the use of uh, a, a field uh, probe um, that can quantify uh, a protein marker called tryptophan, um, which has uh, a strong association um, with wastewater sources. So it's a good predictor of the, of the, of the contribution of wastewater contamination in the environment. We thought it might be good to do a comparison between uh, fe traditional fecal indicators of bacteria counting and, and the, the, the quantified uh, amount of tryptophan found by this probe and see if it was able to predict both the presence and absence um, of uh, fecal ind indicators of bacteria and also if it was able to predict the level of contamination of fecal indicators of bacteria. Perhaps uh, so it could be used as a rapid screening tool um, uh, as part of water quality surveys in these types of settings. It doesn't require many reagents, it's very simple to operate, it's relatively cheap, relatively uh, cost effective, so it might be a good tool uh, to work alongside um, traditional fecal indicator bacteria counting. So this, this um, figure here just shows some preliminary, preliminary results. Both um, uh, the relationship between the, the tryptophan uh, concentration and the depth of groundwater. So we can see, um, and this not nicely illustrates the point that the shallow groundwater systems, which have high faecal indica indicator bacteria counts, also have very high tryptophan concentrations compared to the deeper boreholes uh, within this area. If we compare the tryptophan concentration with the uh, sanitary risk score that we that we undertook um, as part of the survey work. Again, we can see it's it's quite uh, good in predicting the high and very high uh, sanitary risk score sites. Um, and again, we find we find this nice trend of low tryptophan in the low to moderate uh, sanitary risk score sites. This figure shows uh, a borehole profile of tryptophan down an open 
open screened borehole uh, that we came across in our field area. We lowered the tryptophan probe and did a profile. This is prior to them you know, actually installing a pump in the site. Um, and it just gives you an indication of the, the vertical variation in tryptophan within the, within the uh, saturated zone and how this rapidly deteriorates with depth. Um, another technique that we uh, thought we'd pilot within this case study was the use of qPCR. This is um, uh, genome sequencing of fecal uh, pathogens. Um, there have been very few studies that have undertaken um, pathogen sequencing techniques in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and these give, um, rather than um, ge generic values for fecal indicated bacteria, these give particular, um, uh, particular species level data. So as part of this study, we, we, um, we were able to isolate uh, the organic material in the field. We were then able to preserve this material on filters in the field and freeze them prior to transporting them back to the UK. Uh, this was found to be very robust. Um, we carried out blanks in the field and, and these were found to be um, robust as well, so we're quite happy with the method. Um, and also we were able to collect enough material, even from relatively um, low contaminated deep borehole sites, we were able to collect enough material within a realistic time frame in order to quantify the, the absence or presence of these types of pathogens which is also quite useful. Um, so once we'd taken them back to the UK and we carried out the sequencing work, we looked for a, a suite of 26 different pathogens. And this just gives you some preliminary results um, from, from the Cabway case study. So this is split in, into the data set, is split between boreholes and these shallow groundwater uh, sites. And this is a number of uh, different pathogens that we found. So we can see again, um, as in the fecal indica indicator bacteria and also in the organic contamination, we can see a much uh, higher level of contamination from a range of different species of uh, pathogenic bacteria or potentially pathogenic bacteria within the shallow groundwater system. And probably to draw your attention to one particular result, um, this area of Zambia um, is quite well known for uh, intermittent outbreaks of cholera, particularly during the wet season. Um, and uh, you can see that um, three of the sites, three of the shallow groundwater sites that we undertook actually had um, the presence of the cholera virus, uh, as well as a range of other potentially pathogenic viruses. These two uh, results up here uh, for, for uh, Astromyus and uh, C. frudi are, are associated, these are soil associated bacteria. So this, again, um, provides strong evidence that there is a rapid route uh, uh, potentially um, a, a rapid route of transport from the soil, from the shallow zone uh, into, these, um, into these wells and into these boreholes that we can start from. Um, so I think that's probably it. Um, <laughs> probably witted on long enough. <laughs> Thank you for your time and <laughs> I hope that was interesting. Uh, we've published this research in Water Research as, an, as a sort of a full paper. So if you're interested, there's a lot more detail on that uh, in, a, in a journal publication, looking more to research for that. Thanks a lot.